dollars, all that's accurate. If you broke, then you in hell, all that's accurate. Every day I got a grind, I can't relax a bit. Keep working, then you prevail, all that's accurate. I can't take no L's, all that's accurate. If you broke, then you in hell, all that's accurate. Every day I got a grind, I can't relax a bit. Keep working, then you prevail, all that's accurate. What's going on, everybody? I just want to give a huge thank you to Universal Property and Casualty Insurance as they continue to support our mission to inspire the next generation. Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Into Sports. Today, we have a good friend of mine, a man of faith, someone that you know I'm just very blessed to know as an individual, as a person, and he absolutely excels at the profession he's in, something that I'm excited to have more and more people get to learn how to move and operate similar to how he does because... You know, he is a man that walks by faith every single day, doesn't really like to take the credit for the phenomenal work that he does, but he still is a pioneer in a lot of aspects, in a lot of ways. He touches a lot of lives. So Kevion Latham, the founder of Green Rose Wealth Financial Management, is in the building today. Kevion, how are you, man? I'm blessed, man. I'm blessed. I don't know if I, how to, I live up to that introduction, though. I appreciate it. <laughs> Well, you live up to it by just being you, bro. I mean, <laughs> you do it every day of your life. You care about others first. And, you know, that's one of the first things that, you know, I think I noticed about you is you always care about giving back, you know, before seeing a return for yourself. And that's, you know, far too rare in today's society. Yes, yes. Well, I believe that we're all put here, you know, here for a reason and a purpose. So I just hope that I'm, I'm fulfilling my my God-given purpose while I'm here, so. And you are, but uh, let's just dive in because you have a, a cool story and I think it's something that will resonate with a lot of people out there because most of the people that, you know, watch this podcast, they played sports at one point in their life, whether mm -hmm. it's high school, collegiately, et cetera. You're rocking your alma mater right now, bro, on your on your shirt. Yes, and, sir. Uh, can, can you talk a little bit just about your journey from high school and then playing at such a high level with one of the best defensive line coaches of all time, you know, arguably, uh, especially in the college space to then transitioning, you know, to where you're at today? Yeah, man. So, um, uh, again, thank you guys for having me on your podcast. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm originally from North Carolina, um, born and raised. Uh, you know, I grew up in a small town called Robertsonville, North Carolina. And then I ended up moving uh, to a bigger um, city town uh, called Greensboro. And that's where I was recruited um, out of high school uh, to play football. And so um, my journey was kind of, you know, up and down. I actually really didn't even like football growing up because um, my dad, like, forced me to play. And so, um, you know, I, I hated football but um, and loved basketball. Um, and so my uh, ninth grade year, um, actually eighth grade, I ended up breaking uh, my wrist and my, my father told me that I didn't have to play anymore if I didn't want to. And so going into high school, um, I ended up not playing football at all. I was trying to focus on basketball. And I remember my coach, uh, who's like a father figure to me, uh, Coach Otis Yelverton, now uh, pulled me aside from my basketball game and basically was like, son, you, you're a point guard at your height. You know, I was like 6'2 at the time playing, you know, I think center or power four. I was playing down low. And um, he's like, you need to get your butt, in so many words, back on the field. Um, he said, and so uh, from that day, I always, you know, have that in the back of my mind. And so end up doing that, man. And my sophomore year, um, obviously to my senior year, I ended up uh, getting over like 30 offers to play D1 uh, football. I uh, ended up choosing to go to Penn State. Um, as Sammy mentioned, you know, I had a chance to play for Coach Larry Johnson. And um, who at the time and still is, you know, one of the, you know, uh, best defensive line coaches in the country. And um, not only that, but, um, you know, when I was uh, what I wanted to do in college, even if I didn't play football, is I wanted to be an engineer. And so in, in second um, or worst case is uh, going to business. And so Penn State, they both had uh, great engineering programs and, and, and um, business programs. And so, you know, that was the thing that kind of sold me. Uh, Joe Pa um, was, uh, you know, you could play, you know, big time football on Saturdays on ABC um, and uh, you can get a first class education. You know, Penn State Alumni Network um, is, you know, one of the biggest in the world. And so um, I knew that, um, you know, going there, I could get, you know, networking and find a job somehow, somewhere. And so uh, I ended up going to Penn State, man, uh, 2007, 2010. 
um, uh, <laughs> as soon as you get there, you realize that uh, it's, uh, you're an athlete, then a student. Um, because they told me that I couldn't major in engineering. And so I ended up uh, going my backup plan, which was business and kind of just fell into finance, man. Um, you know, like I said, my um, my father was an entrepreneur, is an entrepreneur. He started a business about 25 ish years ago in the entertainment industry. And so I saw him, you know, uh, he only had a high school diploma and I uh, saw him kind of, you know, turn something into nothing. And so I knew a little bit about just business in general and, and knew what lifestyle that would bring you. And so, and I was always thinking about um, just, you know, I'm like, I'm like that today too, just having a backup plan, right? Um, Cause you just never know uh, what can happen. And so uh, going into business, I knew I could, you know, get a job coming out of college uh, if I, you know, were to, to get a degree from Pitt State in business and end up choosing finance um, because, um, just a certain way that the GPAs uh, hit. It was like one of the highest, you had to have one of the highest GPAs after your sophomore year. And so I just thought it was a good barometer to kind of push myself to get into. And so I ended up getting in, man. And, and really, um, you know, uh, we always talk about like, what do you want to do after football or sports in general? And I think um, the question should be is like, even for like college, you know, even if you don't play a sport, it's like, you know, what do you want to do, you know, with your life? You know, you're, you're in college. And I don't think any 18 year old uh, at the time really knows like what they want to do. Right. You haven't even lived enough on your own or life to, to know like what you want to do for the rest of your life, you know, which is a crazy thing to like force a kid to do. All right. Um, and so I just was very, very prayerful um, about um, what I wanted to do and kind of God put it on my heart. You know, I love math. Um, I love helping people. I love like problem solving and I love just being around the sport of football, you know. And so my sophomore year, um, my roommates were um, Aaron Maben, who was like a first round pick to uh, I think the the Bills at the time. And then uh, another uh, gentleman, uh, Navarro Bowman, who um, ended up getting drafted and was like an all pro. So they were my roommates my sophomore year. And so just, you know, I'm a quiet guy anyway, you know, I, I, I love, I listen, right. Um, and so I was, you know, agents, advisors were coming in through our apartment and I was just observing, right. Observing, you know, what they were telling my teammates and kind of, you know, what they were doing. And at the time I didn't really know what a financial advisor was. I knew what an agent were, was, but um, just looking at the, just the whole process, I just thought and felt that it was like very unauthentic, you know, um, those guys in particular, I know Aaron for sure. Like, you know, he wasn't even supposed to play the year that he got drafted. You know, he had another gentleman that was uh, in front of him and something happened with that guy where, you know, Joe suspended him and, you know, and, you know, kind of like Coach Jay always says, like, be ready. You're a next man up. And so Aaron was able to take advantage of that opportunity. But, you know, um, in that, you know, six months before, nobody was knocking at his door, you know. And so, you know, once he started to do well on the field, you know, we, you know, all these people kind of, kind of just came out of nowhere. And I just thought it was like just super, just unauthentic, right? And because um, they didn't see the, you know, the times where he was, you know, struggling to gain weight or us waking up in the morning and doing, you know, five and 6 a.m. workouts. And, you know, all of a sudden now he does well and everybody wants to take advantage of it. And so, um, long story short, man, I just kind of, you know, again, was prayerful and um, just asked God, you know, how can I, um, you know, what can I do? And really what he put on my heart, it was to empower myself, right, with the financial tools and capabilities and literacy so I could then empower my brothers. And so um, that was like in 2008. And I've kind of been on this mission, man, since then to, you know, like I said, just spread uh, financial literacy, uh, not only to obviously my community, but, you know, to my brothers that, you know, I went to, to war with. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's awesome that you, you know, you touched on that part because, uh, you know, I, I mean, Sammy has spoken to it a little bit, you know, when I was going, you know, I grew up in South Florida, Fort Lauderdale, you know, that's a huge football hub. Right. And, you know, when I was picking my, you know, my school to go play baseball in college, um, I wanted to get into that. You know, I had an idea about the sports representation space mainly because of my buddies, you know, that I was real close with that were playing division one football or playing high school football that were going to get to that level. Right. You know, I was just that funny guy. No way I was getting hit anymore. And once everybody got six foot and above, I was done with that. Right. But, you know, those are all some of my closest friends until this day. So, you know, I kind of took that similar path of wanting to learn, you know, the representation space and just sit there and analyze all the different information of taking internships, 
you know, learning from different professors that way, just to pass it on to my buddy, you know, my closest friends that were playing division one ball and, you know, might be fortunate enough to, you know, transition into that pro process. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and another thing I wanted to touch on, I would love to, you know, for you to also touch back, you know, how important it is for, you know, kids in high school of, you know, picking their school, not just maybe for what the facility looks like and, you know, where the location is, but also, you know, having that backup plan, like you talked about, you mentioned, you know, you know, you wanted to go to school maybe engineering or finance and you chose Penn State because those were the programs that were going to excel for what you really wanted to go after because, you know, football could only last for so long, you never know. And I think that's really awesome that you mentioned that. Um, and I just want to have you touch back on that a little bit more for, you know, maybe any other student athletes that are going through that process and, and how important that is for their future. Yeah, I think it's as simple as um, what my father made me do, which I didn't want to do at the time because um, I was too busy trying to, you know, be out in the streets and, you know, be with girls and stuff in high school. But he made me put together literally like a, a pros and a cons list, you know. You know, my top five schools were obviously Penn State, uh, Carolina. I really wanted to go to Carolina because I just wanted to stay home. And I'm a huge Tar Heel fan, basketball fan. Um, who was it? Penn State, Carolina, um, Clemson, and Florida, I believe, was like my top schools. And uh, just kind of doing like literally a pros and cons, you know, list. And um, just looking at, obviously, you know, Florida at the time, you know, Urban Meyer was, you know, they had just won a national championship and, you know, they were like all the buzz was surrounded by them, you know, so on the outside looking in, like that was like the school, the hot school at the time, right? But, you know, you know, Florida, it just, it wasn't, you know, comparable academically to a UNC or a Penn State. And, um, and I think just Penn State, man, you know, um, and obviously when you get, you're getting recruited, you kind of don't know like who to trust, right? Because all these schools are going to tell you like what you and your family want to hear. But for me, man, um, there were a couple of signs from God that kind of helped me, you know, you know, you know, swing the pendulum from UNC to Penn State. But I would just say, man, it's just about just really connecting and seeing yourself um, at that school. Right. Seeing yourself um, and visualizing, um, you know, if it, you know, is something that, you know, you can do. All right. And only, you know, that at that time. So, um, you know, I I would say, uh, like I said, Penn State, man, their network was just crazy. All right, you know, having over 500,000 alumni across the world that, you know, you could tap into and introduce yourself to. And I think a lot of kids got to understand that, you know, when you are a student athlete, you know, um, you need you can leverage, right? Leverage being that football player or, you know, baseball, basketball player to your advantage, right? They're going to answer our calls um, probably a little bit qu- more quickly than just a regular, you know, alumni, you know, no offense. But that was something, man, that I, you know, used to my advantage, uh, especially when I moved to Pittsburgh. And again, I'm not from, you know, PA. All right. So like I didn't hear about Penn State until like, you know, 2006 when they like went to the Orange Bowl that one year, and had that like three, you know, overtime. When yeah, it was State. So the only thing I knew about Penn State was like they had an old coach. And that needed to retire. And then they, you know, Paul Pozdozny and like Michael Robinson, right? Like those are like kind of my like factors. But then you move up to, you know, Pennsylvania, especially Pittsburgh and, you know, the 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 tradition, the culture, just the family, um, the families, because I consider everybody Penn State family, is so deep and rich, you know? And so when I was able to um, get my first job at PNC out of Penn State, you know, I would tell people that, you know, first I went to Penn State, you know, second I majored in finance. And then, oh, by the way, I also played for, you know, Joe Pa. And they're like, oh, OK. And, and typically they just want to hear some Joe Pa stories. But I got in the door, you know. And so um, I think those are the things that, you know, um, the little things that kind of helped me set myself apart and was able I was able to get my, you know, just get my foot in the door and other places that I probably could, you know. So I think those are all things that. You kind of need to, and again, like, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted to do um, when I was going to college. I just kind of saw, you know, my dad planted seeds, right, of him being an entrepreneur and kind of seeing the lifestyle that he lived that, you know, if I were to, like, go down this route, you know, I could probably live that same type of lifestyle. So I would I would encourage, you know, um, the student athletes to, you know, just put themselves in uncomfortable situations away from their sport and just figure out, like, what do they like, you know? 
you touched on so many great points, man, especially the alumni base. It's something I preach all the time. And I always tell people, you know, similar to what you said, when you have that crest on, you're wearing that jersey, people want to talk to you. They want to take pictures, collect those business cards, do whatever it is you need to do to build your network because those relationships are something that can really last you a lifetime. And you're speaking living proof of that right now. Um, but keep you, I, have a, I have a little bit of a two part question here. And it's one, outside of PNC, but now starting your own, you know, company and being a founder of, of your company. Now, how has those relationships that you built in the past and even just the relationship with Penn state as a whole, how has that helped you, um, to be able to leverage that to now assist with what you're doing currently, but two, you know, being on both sides of the table, right. You were somebody that was recruited in high school. So you understood how the recruitment process worked. You also were in the rooms for all the different meetings with the agents and financial advisors while you're in college. So you got to see a little bit of both of that. How has, you know, just being able to see that side of the table really helped you now with what you do and whenever you go to meet and speak with, you know, student athletes that are a lot younger than you, but were in similar shoes at one point in their families? Yeah, man. I mean, I think it just gets perspective, right? On um, just the situation at hand. Um, I would say, getting recruited and I always tell you know players and families this because I, I I didn't play in the league right so I I can I only saw what you know my teammates were going through and I'm sure they went through a bunch of other things that, that I didn't you know um, have access to but I always tell parents and players man um, it's different right when you're going to, to pick a college you're going and you're choosing you're choosing the school right like you're choosing where you want to go and a lot of times it's based off of like it's stupid things right so like for me like I remember like one of the things is like you know one of the reasons I didn't like like one of the cons for Penn State is that they didn't have names on the back of the jersey right like and Carolina did or they wore those like weird those weird helmets those shut helmets I'm like that's stupid right but those are like the things that are going through a 17 year old mind like what's the swag gonna look like what's the locker room gonna look like and I you know I'm thankful that I had advisors you know my parents kind of challenged me on that's shallow, right? Think deeper, like, you know, what are some other things that, you know, kind of separate, you know, the schools? And so um, just thinking more on a deeper level, and that's, again, that's what a lot of these athletes, you know, going and turning professional, um, when they're trying to build their professional team of advisors, it can't be based off of um, the feeling, right? A lot of these, you know, guys, they, they, they may literally make their decisions off of if they get good vibes with, you know, uh, agent or advisor, which is cool, right? Cause you want to know, you know, obviously that you get along with this guy that's going to potentially be working, you know, with you for the rest of your career. But, you know, also you have to dig deeper, right? It can't just be, you know, how many Instagram posts um, that they have that look cool or with other athletes or how many followers that they have or, if they have the blue check, it has to be like, all right, are they NFLPA certified? You know, who are some guys that they currently um, work with that I can, you know, maybe reach out to and kind of get an unbiased opinion? Who are some people that they've been fired by, right? Because uh, you and I know, Sammy, sometimes, you know, clients will leave us and, you know, for whatever reason, but it could be on good terms still, right? And so um, just getting that information, but really, again, digging deep and figuring out, all right, not only how is this person, this advisor, right, going to help me accomplish my goals on and off the field, but what does that look like even when the lights are on, even when football is no longer here, right? Is this a person that I can see myself growing with? And for me, I always challenge a lot of the guys, and even I tell the parents and players this too, is like, you want people in your life that are going to hold, not want, hold you accountable, you know, help you set good goals and help you attain those things, but also help you grow, right, as a man or a woman, right? That's the biggest thing. Like, I don't want anybody in my life that's not going to help me, you know, get out of my comfort zone and grow, right? Because as Joe Paul was, he <laughs> always just say, if you're if you're not growing, you're dying, right? So, like, that's some of, you know, one of the, the taglines I always have in my head every day um, as I, you know, go about life, you know? So you always want those type of people around you. So I don't know if that answered your question, but, you know, that's that's kind of the advice that I would give um, to some of these guys. No, it does, man. And I'm glad that you said two things here in particular. Um, the first being do your research. And, you know, it is something I bring up all the time when I meet with, you know, student athletes and their families. I'm like, look, 
you don't know me from the next person from the next person to do your research. If you want, you know, to talk to some clients, you can talk to some clients. You want to talk to some clients that are no longer in the league, talk to them too. I said, but you should do that for everyone. Talk to some people that are no longer playing the sport because it's easy to be there when it's sunny out. You know, what happens when it rains and it's going to rain for everybody at some point. But, um, so, so that's one of the biggest things I always bring up, but also I love that you mentioned, you know, the other aspect of doing your research because, you know, are you certified? Are you these other things? And this is a platform to expose it, give you on, because we all see it in this industry and I hate it. There's a lot of shadiness. And I know of someone even recently that reached out to me like, Hey man, can you represent me? And I'm like, what are you talking about? You're in the league. Like, who's your agent? He's like, Oh, well, this group claims to rep me, but, uh, I never signed an agreement with them. And I was like, Oh, let's look into them a little bit more. They're not even certified. Right. So they're claiming to be their agent, but they never signed an SRA or an agreement because they couldn't because they were never certified. So this whole time, this person went through the whole draft process and everything, believing he was represented by an agent and he was never represented by anyone. So it's just like those little things where you try to, dig, you know, take advantage of the situation. And for any athlete listening to that out there, there's a big difference for that because, Kevin, as you know, there's certain, you know, guidelines and rules in place around certified contract advisors where, you know, you know, for example, you know, if you coming in as a non-certified agent, you now be, may be able to charge depending on what your management agreement says for a player's stipend during training camp, or if they make a practice squad and different things that the NFLPA tries to protect against. So just those little tidbits, man. I mean, being on both sides of the table, I think that's really helped you be able to help guide in that. And it's cool that to see, that you're making those differences in the lives of others. But now I want to pivot a little bit and, and move forward to something that you and I talk a lot about. And I think one of the biggest things that we connected on was our faith, right? Right out the bat. And that's a huge aspect of your life, a huge aspect of your career. And similar to, similarly, it's the same thing for me. Um, how has your faith just helped propel you from you know, making that transition from from being a football player to, you know, working at a large corporation, then starting your own company, and now where you're at today, where you know, I, I'm sure it's same as you. We we talk to a lot of people, we don't get hired by a lot of people. You know, it's mm -hmm. just one of those things you have to keep pushing forward, trust and believe in in God's plan. Yeah, man, it's really um, honestly, man. I, I think being in this business has like helped my like like my relationship with God, right? Like. Because there are just some things that that happen. And it's just like it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever, you know. And so, uh, but obviously, God, you know, allowed it to happen, right? So, um, I think for me, man, um, being in this business has really tested my faith, uh, and has really um, just, in, you know, how can I say it? It's it's really uh, grown me closer um, to the Lord, because I, I know that, you know, certain situations, certain things that have happened, have you know, you, you think about like, why could that happen at the time? And you go through, you know, whatever process you go through to grieve. And then, you know, a year or so later, you're like, oh my God, something comes out and it's like, oh, okay. Like, thank you, God. <laughs> like, thanks. I didn't have to go through that. But um, it's with everything, man. It's just obviously recruiting. Uh, it, it sucks. I shouldn't say it sucks. I actually like recruiting because it's hard um and it's nothing like it's no like algorithm to like make sure you get you know the client and so um recruiting for me man is just it, it's fun because it's it's really just taking a leap of faith right you know putting time and energy into a player or family and kind of letting god kind of you know show out right um and then just with my business man like you know um uh, you know like i said i i started my business uh green rose uh, in 2018 and I literally got the name you know from a prayer uh, that I had um with God because I'm not really creative but um you know uh I was at a, a firm where I was working with some of the top the top athletes in the in the world and I ended up you know leaving there and taking a leap of faith and and, and starting Green Rose and uh, you know by the grace of God it'll be four years in November um, you know, we've never had to take a loan from a bank, you know, we've always made payroll. And so uh, God literally has sustained us, uh, even losing, you know, big time clients. Um, you know, we've never, um, have not been profitable since day one. And so that in itself is, is a blessing and I'm hard on myself. Um, you know, 
anyways, but, um, you know, God has been just super, you know, faithful and the guy and the guys that we work with, man, I think that's really the blessing is that I'm able to, um, really just pour into, to, to the guys that we work with. Right. You know, so obviously they hire me to be their financial advisor, but I feel like, uh, the Lord has given me this platform, um, to not only share my story, um, and, and see if it resonates with, you know, players or families. Um, to help, you know, give advice, give resources, but also to to minister, man. Because at the end of the day, like I always tell some of my guys, if I can bring you closer to, to the Lord, then a lot of the other, you know, ancillary things will take care of themselves, you know. So um, it's been cool, man. It's been a, a great journey, and um, you know, it's it's been you know just cool to to see how God moves and and to see you know our our dreams. And our thoughts are here and his like thoughts are like up here. We can't even see him. All right. And so, um, you know, my prayer, I used to have, you know, I'm very goal oriented and I, you know, I have all these things that I want to hit and I still do that, but I always ask like, God, let your will be done. Right. Cause at the end of the day, his will is going to be done regardless of what we want or, um, you know, what we're, we're going for. So, um, just having, you know, faith in that. And, it's, and I, I say it like, it's, it's pleasant and easy. It's not right. But I think, you know, through, through the valleys, that's when you get to know God more. And when you come up out of those valleys, um, that's where you could, you know, do what I'm doing now. Right. Just tell them about the goodness and, you know, reap the the benefits uh, if you sow good seeds. Yeah. And the day I surrendered my life over to God, similar to you, was really the turning point in everything. You know, everything that I do in life and especially this industry and Kivion, you mentioned it. You know, sometimes you don't know why you're there. You don't know why you're doing the things, but you're trusting the process and trusting his plan for it. And it's crazy, man, because, you know, I, I think back to even how I got into this industry and technically I shouldn't be in it because that's not whatever I, you know, I never strived to be a sports agent. I didn't even know it was a job. And in, when even when I was in college, I didn't know it was a job. It wasn't until I got to law school and really started to learn about it my uh, first semester that I realized it was a career. But then I fast forward to, you know, one client in particular. And I just remember going through the process with him, man. And it's, you know, like you talked about, it's uh, it's one of those things where you do have to challenge your clients because you want them to be better, you know, not just athletes, but better men. And um, I really had to pour a lot of effort and time and energy into this one particular person because he never grew up with a father figure. So he didn't know what that was like to have that consistent male in his life. And I'll never forget the day, but I was, I was actually traveling. I was at a hotel in Ohio and I got a call from him just out of the blue, just to talk. Right. And we're just talking about life. And he ended the call with Sammy. I just need to tell you, man, like, You've been the biggest blessing in my life because you're the most consistent male figure that I've ever had. And I want to thank you for that. And that still gives me chills to even think about. And, and I think about it all the time. And, you know, those tough days that we all have and, you know, it, it's tough to get up and you need to have that stronger force than just motivation. You need to have that. Why? And similar to you, that why is how can I make that real instrumental difference into someone's life? And now that same individual it's crazy because that same individual, every time I talk to him and Austin knows who I'm talking about, but I'm going to leave names out is now ending every single phone call that him and I get on with hey man, God bless you. Hey man, God bless you. And that was never the case before because he didn't have that real relationship, but now he prays every day and it's, he really changed all aspects of his life. And I've watched him become, you know, not just a really solid football player, but a way better man um, and father. And that's something that's been more rewarding than any contract I could have negotiated for him and his family. Yeah, man. It's like my grandmother would always tell me. Uh, she was like, she always says, like, it's only what you do for Christ is that, you know, is what's going to last. What you do for Christ um, it will last. And I feel like that's it's to your point, right? We can give guys um, the greatest um, advice and counsel on, you know, negotiating contracts or saving money or this or that. But just like the game's going to be over, right? You know, one way or another, whether they like it or not. And then also you're going to be going to die one day, you know? So, you know, we can give you the best financial advice to get there. But, you know, if we can, you know, spread the love and, the, um, you know, the faith of, of Jesus Christ, man, like, that can then, you know, kind of spider web and, and go uh, from generation to generation. So I honestly think it's like the most important thing, um, you know, but, you know, 
I, I try not to force it on people, you know, like I try to let the Holy Spirit kind of just lead me and guide me and, and God, you know, puts people in my life that, you know, again, um, where we plant seeds, those seeds are going to, you know, grow, right? And so, um, yeah, man, it's, it's been cool though, just kind of sharing that and, and being able to do that, right? We have the blessing, like some people, you know, work at jobs where they can't talk like this freely, right? They can't, you know, kind of share their faith. And so um, God has, you know, uh, given us a platform. So we got to just take advantage of it. Yeah, and I, I think that's where it's been, you know, it's also in our, you know, in, in, our guy, in our job for us, right? You know, being able, you know, to more so put together those relationships and really get to know the everybody, you know, as a, as man to man, right? Person to person and just being able to touch, like you said, on those points you might not be able to do in a traditional business setting, right? And, and just being able to build that comfortable uh, like a comfortability like for people like us to just connect with one of you know, with one another and not feel any type of judgment but also be able to know that you know the business side of things are going to be taken care of right mm -hmm. and, and i think that's where a lot you know it helps to stand out for some guys you know just to be able to build that that relatability with them and and just to have those genuine conversations you know because if you could trust someone with just something a simple conversation you know that goes a long way you know, it, it takes a lot for people to open up. And I think that's what's been a beautiful thing in our industry of us being able to to help these men, like Sammy said, and just continue to grow with them with them as we're all growing together. Right. Because it's a whole journey, you know, especially throughout their careers that, you know, so many ups and downs. So, I, you know, I think it's a beautiful thing that you mentioned how you're able to have those relationships on the side with your business um, to go to go hand in hand. So, Kevion, a lot has changed in the last year, year and a half, especially in our industry. Um, we have the emergence of NIL. And so, you know, that's a hot topic for anyone. And we all now have different roles because of that, right? Where people are asking different questions. There's going to be a lot of different circumstances that come up with college athletes that are now making money, especially those that have never had it before and never had the exposure to it. You know, how, how has NIL impacted you in, or has it in any ways? And uh, how do you see the future of just that education from your standpoint and, and helping these athletes at even a younger level now start to come to the realization of, hey, you know, these are what things look like. This is an asset. This is a liability. You know, these are uh, you do have to pay taxes and, and those sorts of things that they've never been exposed to before. Yeah, man. So it's really kind of the same thing um, that I've been doing, obviously building a relationship. Right. Um, you know, with the player, with the family. Um, but also in that, it's just the pro obviously the process is it's not you don't have three years anymore to build it, right? You got to build it, you know, super fast, and then also kind of educate along the way. And so it's been it's been a learning experience, man. I'm still kind of um, kind of going through it. Like last year, um, I really didn't see a lot of it, um, but this year I'm definitely starting to see you know more. And it's really just trying to um, obviously see what the universities are doing, right? Because a lot of times, like, you know, guys don't really need, still, they don't really, really need a financial advisor. I would say they do need a uh, tax, uh, uh, you know, advisor and accountant because, you know, they are going to have to pay taxes on those, you know, any monies received um, the following year. And so just helping them with that, helping them with, you know, you know, giving them advice. I'm not a CPA, so I can't give tax advice. But, you know, we can help plan for taxes, plan, you know, to help get the LLC set up, you know, getting bank accounts set up and really just giving them a flow chart of the foundation of what needs to be done. Right. So then once the money does come in, there's already a process um, in place to get those funds to, you know, make sure vendors are saved, make sure that you have bookkeeping, right, to keep track of income and expenses, um, all the things that are necessary um, so you can be successful in that area. Um, but it's, I think it's the same thing, man. The kind of the main, just building good relationships, right? I don't care if you're, you know, a football player or in college or basketball or, you know, a CEO of a, a startup company, right? You got to still got to build a relationship you know, with the guys, because at the end of the day, like we're all selling something, right? And, you know, as long as you're like registered and not, uh, you know, scamming anybody, um, the products are really the same, right? It's not too much. I mean, obviously some, you know, guys may have the access to a little bit more than others, but at the end of the day, it's all about the relationship, right? If you don't have a rela good, rela solid relationship, then, you know, these last eight months, you're 
you know, especially in my market, right? Your stock market's been crazy, right? Bad, right? So if you're all predicated on selling, you know, products and selling performance, then you probably had a tough time, right? I'm not saying that I didn't, but I think, you know, having good solid relationships kind of helps, you know, when things are going too well. And so, again, I, I think that's the foundation. And then once the, obviously the relationship is established, everything else, you know, we're, you know, good at what we do, right? So we're all certified. Um, we've been in it for over 10 years. So those processes should come easy. But I think obviously establishing that relationship is is, is paramount and um, and just figuring out who the decision makers are, right? And so and, and educating them because a lot of these players, you know, they um, would like to think that they're, you know, um, in charge, but most of the times it's the parents, right? So making sure that the parents are involved or whoever is involved, mentor, um, that they're involved to, to help, you know, pass the information that we're giving to them along to them so that everybody's on the same page. And, you know, I, I want to just touch on this quickly, Kivion, because I think a lot of people, whenever they think of finance, right, they don't think of finance in the sense of working in sports and being able to work with athletes and stuff. And so a lot of the students that are listening, you know, especially in college right now, may say, hey, I want to work in sports because I want to work closely with the athlete. I want to be at the games. I want to be an agent or a coach or a scout. But they don't see what you do in the relationship. And I've been blessed, you know, to work with you. Um outside of just our friendship, right? But be able to actually work together with certain people. And, you know, it is cool to be able to see that relationship that you do build. Can you kind of walk through, not a, I guess there is no such thing as a typical day in the life because every day is different, but, you know, a day in the life and also like a year in the life of, of you, like that you're actually out here, right? You go to games, you go meet with families, you go meet with athletes, like you attend certain things. I mean, you and I were at, you know, a client's wedding together recently, just mm -hmm. stuff like that to, to kind of explain how closely you actually work with each in, individual client. Yeah, man. So like, again, it's all, you know, predicated upon that relationship. You know, some guys I'm closer with than others. Um, but, um, it just depends, man. Day in the life, you know, like today, you know, we had, we, we got a client that's, you know, uh, moving from an apartment to a town home. We got another client that's buying uh, a, a fire house station. And so helping them get, you know, the inspections and due diligence done. Um, we got another client that's, you know, about to sign a, a, a big three-year deal. And so we're helping him <clears throat> with buying a house and kind of getting his budget straight. And then as far as like just, you know, being around, you know, we try to go to games, right? But as you know, Sammy, going to games really is a <laughs> more of an expense to us than anything because, you know, I just try to be cognizant, of, right? You know, me playing, like the last thing I wanted to do was talk to anybody after I played a game on Saturday, right? And so really going to the games is just like supporting, you know, the player and knowing that like, hey, you know, I, I, you know I'm here, you know. Um, you know, I want to, you know, see you and obviously the parents or, or family members there is helpful, but just being cognizant, right? I know guys don't, they, they're, you know, nine times out of ten, they're not going to talk about finances uh, after they play on Sunday, right? It's just not, and then usually on, you know, Sunday, they got to work, they got to be back at work on Monday, so they're off days until Tuesday, right? And so I mean, we try to get the games, which makes sense, but really, you know, our time is, is during the off season, right? Getting with them, um, spending, you know, a day or so with the guys and kind of just breaking bread or it might be, you know, one of my clients who went to Carowinds, you know, this past summer huh. and I uh, had cookouts and stuff like that. And, and that's one of the guys that, um, like you said, Sammy, I, I think that he looks at me um, in much more of just a financial advisor. I feel like he looks at me like a, a, a kind of like a father figure, right? Somebody that's that's been consistent throughout our entire relationship, somebody that he can depend on. Right. And so, um, and those honestly, man, that's, that's, that's what I wake up for. Those are the things that, um, makes this job fun, right. You know, buying the stocks and, and helping with real estate and all that kind of stuff is great. Right. Helping them make more money, helping them to, you know, sustain their lifestyle, even when the sport's gone, but really connecting and, you know, having those tough conversations, right. And, you know, having a player call you and say, Hey, you are right. Right. Even I don't I don't like being right. But just having, you know, you know, a guy, right, that you're in the prom, right? That everybody wants to be around them. You know, they're pretty much, you know, the who's who. 
But to have somebody to have the humility to say, hey, you know, Keith, you know, like you were right. I shouldn't have made that decision. Right. That that is what, you know, I do this for, you know, so because that guy could have went this way, but instead he's now going a different way. And it could, you know, it's probably going to save him a couple, you know, hundred thousand bucks and, you know, some heartache. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And, and, you know, I think that, again, it goes back to being able to have those tough conversations and building that relationship where I think you've been able to have the most success. Right. And, you know, it just makes things a lot smoother when you go through those ups and downs. So, you know, I'm glad you're able to touch on that part, you know, of how, how different it is from people from the outside looking in uh, from my, you know, the time that has to be put in when it comes to, you know, adding a new client into the business and, and continue to grow that relationship to build that trust especially for something like you, you know, things could easily go so south, but being able to, you know, educate them along the whole process. So nothing is almost a surprise, right? You're able to have that honest conversation as things are going to progress, go up and down throughout their career, which is, I think is a beautiful thing. And it is an awesome asset to have in our industry. For sure. Well, Kevion, we appreciate the time, my man. And thank you so much just for coming in and dropping some nuggets and and really helping, you know, showcase what you do, because I think it's very important in what you do. Um, obviously, it is from a financial standpoint, but even more so from the human growth standpoint. So thank you again, my man. We really do appreciate your time. Thank you guys for having me, man. I appreciate it.